Why are unconscious people so confused? Imagine following situation. You go into a shop or a fast food restaurant. You order something and you say extra, please, not spicy or not too spicy. And what happens at the end still They bring you food which is much more spicy than you expected, than you have ordered. And this is just one small example from the everyday confusion of the unconscious people. But why are they so unconscious and why are they so confused in their everyday life, even in their ordinary work? It's not that they are silly. You can say now they are silly, but it doesn't have to do. Even someone who is educated in the best ways and who has the best abilities for his job, still in his everyday life, he's falling in such a big unconscious that he or she is not able to do the very easiest things. And the basic blockades here are that the normal people, the unconscious people, are full of emotions and thoughts, especially negative ones. Some are not even aware about it. They are better in suppressing, but still, if they suppress, they suffer from that. As well as the people who are not suppressing also suffer. These are emotions or thoughts like anger, greed, hatred, and so on. In the Bible, it is said that since they fall from paradise, they fall in a kind of a confusion or unconscious. And in Buddhism, it is also said that there is a kind of ignorance which causes all these poisons like hatred, anger, and so on. There's also a video about that Buddhist aspect. But now, this time we want to talk more about this aspect from Christianity when it is said that they fall in confusion and sin. Nowadays, in most cases, sin, most people have already overcome just on the surface because they got the ability to suppress and the more people get civilized they overcame sin by suppressing especially that in front of other people in society they are not angry they are not full of negative emotions or thoughts so they learn to suppress as a coping strategy actually it's not the best coping strategy let's go more to the terms confusion and sin so the sin is basically solved by suppression, which is not so good. But the ego was even very clever here to find the suppression. So it looks on the surface as we already have killed sin. And when there are still people who are bad and are not able to, to suppress, they end up in prison. Or in school, they end up at the school psychologists or things like this. People which doesn't fit in the society there are special institutions where they can push these people so they can on the surface say we are free of sin, we are so good. But that's not the final solution. As you know, we have to work and to develop and not just to even blame people and push them in certain institutions like uh, psychiatry or something like this. And you know it from your own experience, even if you have not been in psychiatry, Suppressed emotions and thoughts act out from the unconscious areas in us. It's not only that the unconscious people have unconscious areas, we all have the unconscious, which are areas where the suppressed stuff goes inside. So everything we don't want to see. We want to be good. Whole Christianity made a teaching about we want to be good. So we suppress all the bad. We don't want to see it. We suppress it down. And then in the unconscious, all the suppressed stuff grew and grew. And suddenly it's just a question of time. And the bomb will explode. You go out on society, you suddenly get anger. And then the energy is so big because it grew, before it grew in the unconscious in the suppressed areas. And then suddenly you get out of control and then prison <laughs> or psychiatry. I don't know. I don't mean you. I mean basically or more unconscious people which don't know about these happenings inside of us. You already know it from your experience or from videos like this. So you always are open to learn and to develop, which most people are not. And that's why you don't end up in that psychiatry or in that prison. But still, you can suffer the same ways like the normal unconscious people when someone is triggering you. Because when you're on the path to the higher self, to the enlightenment, you are even more sensitive. And then things even trigger you more, 
even you have not suppressed so much maybe you are already able to transcend the emotions how i explained it in that other video about the transcendental meditation so you are able maybe to transcend and to resolve the emotions or negative thoughts and that is so great actually but still something triggers you because always there is still a rest inside of us we are still humans we are not holy or something like this so there is still a rest and whenever something triggers it can happen that you are also very angry suddenly and even you have it more under control when you are a meditator but the point is this energy is higher because you have a higher energy level than the unconscious people which always waste their energy in their everyday life in anger with people in greed in work in business whatever but you save your energy more and when then you are triggered then you feel there is so much energy inside of you and this energy also then uses the anger and then you appear even more angry than the unconscious people unfortunately and therefore i have made these videos about these meditations but they are more for you they are not for the unconscious people. i only explain from my own experience i don't make it too difficult because i want to present easy videos that everyone can understand and can meditate in the right ways and not about you know this kind of meditation stuff which nobody understands no i explain it so that everyone can understand that was so far about sin which is basically a collecting word for negative thoughts and emotions but what about the confusion now which is the main issue of this video Actually, the confusion is the outcome, as already said, from all these thoughts and all these emotions when someone is not coping with them. Like the normal unconscious people, they are not even aware that they have these emotions or thoughts, or even when they are aware, they suppress, or they act it out, or they cope in wrong ways, and that's the main problem. And that's why they end up in confusion, because they don't... And the bridge between the sin and the confusion are basically feelings of guilt and anxiety or any kind of very bad emotions because from all these negative feelings or thoughts and everything what they carry around with them and they don't cope with it all these things at the end cause first of all a feeling of guilt against yourself because they actually they have to care for themselves first that they solve all these inner problems and when they have solved them they also will have good outcomes with others and with relationships and so but they don't look in the inside they don't want to see what's going on inside of them and that's why guilt is there or even anxieties the anxieties always try only to prevent them to look inside when someone starts with meditation and looks inside of himself for the very first time he appears very anxious because all this suppressed stuff he sees for the very first time and there is so much different stuff and that is overwhelming and so his ego is anxious and then most people say oh i don't want to meditate again it was not good for me that's a big problem actually the same is with guilt and then they feel guilty they don't even know why they feel guilty and so they entangle even more in the outside world always running away from their feelings of guilty and anxieties also so this is why i say these are the hardest emotions because they entangle you even more on the outside and prevent even that you want to look inside. Sadness is different. With sadness, people take a retreat and want to look what's inside or they want even to be alone. So that is different. But when you look on anxiety or guilt, these emotions always try to pull you to the outside world that you don't look inside of you. It's not you, I say just you, but I mean actually more the unconscious people. So what leads them then to confusion? It is so that not everything confuses them because they are actually distracting, because they are running away from themselves. No? They, they don't want to see the anxious feelings or other feelings, even what everything that's inside of them. So they are distracting in the world. They are hanging around on their phone. They are doing things. They are distracting so much their mind. And this also leads to more confusion. They love even noise. They can't bear the silence. That's a big problem also for their development. And whenever it comes to silence, their mind even more jumps around and can't listen. When you want to talk to them, they can't listen because the mind, first of all, 
is even confused from the suppressed emotions and so and then also from this distraction like hanging on the phone and this also confuses the mind even more and so they run more and more in confusion it's why they said in the bible in that paradise thing they fell out in confusion and sin and they fall and fall and it is, it is as if some people would fall and never stop falling because they distract even more and more and more and more things and in catholic teachings it is also said that demons hate silence and melody melody has an order and demons like chaos and that's why they have addiction to noise And this is also why they confuse the people. When you say it's demons, it's not like demons are flying entities or so. It's not like that. In old Catholic teachings, from example, from Evagius Ponticus, it is said that demons are actually the thoughts. Also in Buddhism, you can find teachings about kilesas and kandas. It's not like that they are separate entities. It's more like they are coming from ego and they cause negative thoughts and more negative thoughts. And then they entangle you more in things and distract more in things. And this is what they want to say, that when people are entangling more in noise and avoid the silence, first of all, the outer silence, but they also don't have an inner silence. Also, there is so much noise. And that's why they say the demons don't like the noise. Because the demons are just thoughts, negative thoughts. And I raised up the point with the demons because you are not so much full of this stuff. You are more about silence. You are more about emptiness, a positive kind of emptiness of clarity inside, about clearing yourself free from emotions, free from thoughts. And when you then go in a shop or you entangle with the unconscious people, I don't want to say you have to avoid them because that would be not good. It is good to entangle from time to time. There are also videos about that. So it will every time be a good challenge for you with yourself. How far are you developed? What can you happen? What can you do? And when then you come in the room, in the shop or whatever, you blind them even more. They are already confused from their own behavior, from their suppressed things, their these emotions, and then from their phone distraction or other distraction, whatever is there. And suddenly there is this meeting with you, clarity against the noisy inner soul, which is full of stuff and distraction. So it's a meeting between chaos and order, you can say. And that's why even people overreact. It can happen that even some people attack you because they can't bear your clarity. That is the worst case. But it can also happen that they are fine with you or they try to play a good seller, a good trader. They actually feel that they have something against you, but they know they are even more developed than the first kind of people which are attacking you. They also are feeling that there is something inside of them which tries to attack you, but they consciously know that they have to behave good with customers. So they force themselves and suppress even more their negative stuff which comes up when it is seeing you or the clarity. It's not you, it's actually the clarity inside of you, the light, God's light inside of you, you can say with religious words. But also, again, I must repeat, this is not a religious channel. I just use the words to explain these psychological happenings even better than the psychology does because the modern psychology is very limited. We have to use old knowledge about the soul from previous times. And therefore, some religions are very good to explain. So there is this happening. You come in the room, you have this clarity. The people are there. They are rejecting you. Some are even attacking you. Not physically even that they can previous times maybe some even would attack you physically but now they attack you just with words and then there are people they behave even better they suppress their will to attack you so they still on the surface behave good but inside of them there is the sin there are these emotions which try to attack you and they don't even know why they don't see your clarity because they don't even know what clarity is that's the first thing but it's not a mental process that they have to know about it It's also that whatever happens inside of them, it just wants to attack you because it hates silence and it hates clarity and it wants chaos 
and in one's noise. And that's why it appears so demonic and so negative with them when they are even acting it out or shouting on you in that worst case. But even that ones who suppress, then they suffer themselves because they are not happy with themselves, what happens inside of them. But in long term, it's good to meet you because also your clarity is spreading light out. And also this will clear these people in long term, not for this short meeting. But also even a small meeting is always a small contribution to make a better world when you have meeting with people. It doesn't mean you have to entangle too much now again not too much entanglement with people but when you entangle and when you have to do something you always do automatically good you don't have to behave extra good you can do you can also entangle in a group for doing good ethical behavior and do extra good things okay that's super but even if you don't do anything extra even you are just in meditation and you are just in clarity even then it has a good effect on others because it clears them up also. You tidy up in their soul, even if you don't do anything extra. But their reaction, first of all, appears more confused. And that's why they can't serve you so good. And that's why you don't get the unspicy food, why you still get the spicy food, even if you have not ordered it. This is because they are over-challenged with the meeting. Actually, they are maybe very good in their job, have good abilities, have good education, whatever. But suddenly you appear with your clarity and with your light, you appear in the room. And that's confusing for them. Even they are already confused, but they are not aware about it. But when you come with your clarity, suddenly some of them unconsciously become aware about it, even if they don't know about clarity and these things. But they are all unconsciously aware about it. And that's why someone, the worst ones, even react and overreact and shout at you for no reasons. That's just a reaction because of this hatred is so active then, this aggression. And some, even those ones who suppress, they suffer also because they feel there is this clarity and they can't bear it and they can't handle it. And they even maybe it can happen when clarity comes inside of them that they see some own emotions, which they can't bear. And so... More and more clarity comes when they have meetings with you, but always they see the negative things inside of them, which become clearer also, because first you have to see them before you can resolve them. And they can't, they have never been confronted with negative emotions or thoughts because they are all suppressed and they are there like these hairballs, what cats have in the stomach from cleaning themselves. You know, it's, it's like an entanglement of these hairballs from a cat. And so all these things they have inside of their soul, actually. And they are not visible, even not mentally visible, because it's so much stuff which is not visible because it's so entangled even inside of them. And then when this clarity comes, it, it solves a little bit. And then you can see the single emotions or negative thoughts even clearer. And that's why they then more suffer because they see inside of them and then they are even more confused for a period of time before the very first time they are confronted with clarity and it's a kind of a meditation even if they are not aware that this is a meditation when you come with your clarity or with your light on them and so they actually meditate a little bit not consciously but you do it actually and this has an effect on them. And that's why they then even are more confused because they are seeing the very first time what is all of these bad emotions inside of them. So they are not absolutely clear. And it's not that it clears them totally up. It's just to bring a small light inside of them to see, first of all, what is all bad there. And that's why they are confused even more when they see you. Even they are basically confused, but... Now they are confused even more in that meeting. And that's why they are doing things wrong and they are not doing their job good because the confusion becomes a peak a little bit more than normal for a period of time just. And then they fall back in their normal confusion. And that's it. That's why the unconscious people are always so confused. And when you have the meeting with them, then they are even more confused. Hope you could get it and you could take some interesting aspects with you. 
If you have still questions left, please let me know down below in the comments. Have a nice week. See you soon. Bye.